A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Listen, see if you can recognize the famous voice on this record. Right, that's just a little bit of a record of Mickey Mouse singing Happy Mouse. To get this record for your very own, just look for the special Wheaties box with a record on the front. You see, it's not just a picture of a record you'll find there. It's an actual Walt Disney Mouseketeer record that's part of the Wheaties box. Just cut it out with scissors, punch out the center hole, and it's ready to be played on any 78 RPM manual control record player. Ready to be played again and again. There are eight different Mouseketeer records you can get, all featuring famous Walt Disney characters. There's Donald Duck's song, Goofy singing It's Fun to Whistle, and many, many more. Just look for the special Wheaties Mouseketeer record package at your grocer's. The records won't cost you one penny extra with Wheaties, Breakfast of Champions. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto... The daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I am Silver! When Stan Jordan and two other men robbed the bank at Fowlerville, the Lone Ranger tried to pick up their trail but failed. And a few days later, he and Tonto made camp a few miles from the little railroad town of St. Elmo. After they had eaten, Tonto saddled his horse. Let me go to town, I'll keep myself here. By supplies. Well, while you're there, Tonto, make some inquiries about Stan Jarden. He and his two friends might have gone to St. Elmo. Me not know names of Jarden's friends. Neither do I, but you know their description. That's right. Easy scout, easy fella. We asked some people in town. Get them up, scout! When Tonto reached town, he rode to the livery stable. As he put scout into a stall, he noticed a rangy bay with a white star on its left flank. It was the horse ridden by Stan Jarden. Tonto looked for the stable keeper. Me want to ask question. What is it, Injun? Uh, where you get horse with star on left flank? Oh, him? Well, he's not one of our string. We're boarding him for a fellow. Oh, well, when you get him? About a week ago, a fellow rode in, paid a month's board in advance, and said he'd be back in about that time. And where fellow go? Say, a mighty nosy Injun. You know him? Ah, uh, me know him. Where him go? To Chicago. Leastwise, that station agent said that's where he bought a ticket to. Oh, that far off? Yeah, Chicago's quite a ways from here. When will you be back for your horse? Uh, me go buy supplies now. Me come back soon. Then you better pay me now. I got to run up to my house for about an hour. Mm. May not be back by the time you want to leave town. Ah, uh, me. Me pay now. Well, thanks. Come back again when you're in town. Ah, me do it. Tuttle hurried to the general store where he bought supplies. Then he watched the livery stable. When he saw the stable keeper leave, he went inside and made an investigation before returning to camp to tell the lone ranger what he had learned. Me find saddlebag on rack outside stall, a bay horse with star on flank. In saddlebag, me find this. Oh, a picture postcard. Just a Jordan. Not right. From Chicago. This is a picture of the stockyards. <laughs> it says, Wish you were here. It's signed by a woman, Clara. Here's her address. 
You send telegram to Lawman in Chicago? No, the telegrapher might talk and tip off some of Jordan's friends. I'll write a letter to the Chicago chief of police. When the chief of the Chicago police received the letter, he called in the city's most famous team of detectives, Nick Clark and Patsy Lanahan. Did you men ever hear of a criminal named Stan Jordan? Stan Jordan? No, not me. No, me neither. What's his line, chief? Bank robbery. I have a letter from the West saying he's wanted out there. It gives his description and warns that he's a very dangerous man. Here's the letter. Take it along. All right, Chief. Let's have it. Hey, this letter isn't signed. I figured you got it from some lawman out there. The only indication as to who may have sent it was this. It was in the envelope. A bullet? A silver bullet? Now, what do you make of that? Some of the Western lawmen who've been to Chicago have told me about a mysterious character out there who aids the law. They say he uses silver bullets like that one. Well, who is he, Chief? Well, no one seems to know who he is, but they call him the Lone Ranger. The law. <laughs> oh, I've heard about him, but, Chief, you don't believe that now, do you? <laughs> it's just one of those tall stories Westerners make up to tell us Easterners. <laughs> sure. The Lone Ranger. Chief, if you ask me, someone's playing a practical joke on you. Sure they are, Chief. I don't agree with you. Now, I want this clue followed down. That's an order. All, All right, right, Chief. If you say so. Right, come on, Nick. This address is a cheap rooming house down by the stockyards. <laughs> Come on in, Stan. You're just in time for breakfast. Hiya, Claire. How's every little thing this morning? Fine. Have a chair and I'll dish up eggs and bacon. What I want right now is fresh air. I'm going to raise the window. Hey, who's at the door? How do I know? Good morning, girlie. Who's your gentleman friend over there by the window? Who are you? Officers of the law. It's him, Nick. See, the description fits. Yeah, it's him, all right. Fellow, we want to talk with you. Look out, Patsy. He's going for a gun. Ah! Oh! I'll be hit, Nick. I'll be hit. Stop! Stop! When Patsy Lanahan fell to the floor mortally wounded, Stan Jarden jumped through the window and escaped down the fire escape. A few days later, Tonto rode into the Lone Ranger's camp with copies of the Chicago newspapers. And the masked man read aloud the accounts of the murder of Patsy Lanahan and the escape of Stan Jarden. It's too bad Jarden wasn't captured in Illinois. Why you say that? Because he would hang for murder in that state. Here he's only wanted for bank robbery. That carries only a prison term. He is arrested. Mm, that's not good. Of course, he could be extradited to Illinois. It would mean a long court hearing. Clever lawyer might even prevent it. But there's no use discussing that when Jordan is still free. Maybe Stan Jordan come back to St. Elmo and get horse. It's starting to get dark. We ride into town and talk to the stable keeper. Huh. The big boss. All right, let's go. One silver. One pound. Meanwhile, in St. Elmo, Bill Baxter, the livery stable man, dozed in the cubbyhole office. But he came to life when the westbound freight train rolled through town. Well, there goes old 97. Time me to close up shop and go home for the night, I reckon. Oh, hello, mister. How do you sell? The stable man turned to see a man enter the little office, a saddlebag hanging loosely from one arm. It struck him that there was something familiar about the visitor. But he was tired and his mind was foggy from sleep. I was just going to close up shop for the night. You don't remember me, huh? Well, seems I have seen you before somewhere. Yeah, you've seen me. That bay horse of the star belongs to me. Oh, yeah, I remember now. You're the fellow who went to Chicago. I just came in on that freight, and I want to talk to you. Hey, what's the idea of that gun? Quiet. You better get out of here. Someone's coming. I'm not leaving, but I got you covered. I'm getting behind the door. You get rid of whoever it is, Prado, savvy? Sure, sure, I'll get rid of him. Mask man, what do you want? I want to talk to you about that bay horse with the star on his flank. Freeze, what? mister. Stan Jordan. Yeah. Now I know what I came all the way back here to find out. What's that? How the Chicago police found out I was in town. Me get him. Hey, you. I go in. You'll break my arm. I quit. I quit. All right, let him up, Toto. Me, me get 
got it done. Land sakes. All right, let's go, Jordan. Where are you taking me? To the sheriff in Pineville. Me get bay horse with star on plan. When the Lone Ranger and Tonto reached Pineville with their prisoner, the masked man told Tonto to wait outside the sheriff's office with Jardin. Then he entered the office. Good evening, Sheriff. Huh? Hey, what's the idea? Don't reach for your guns. I'm no outlaw, Sheriff. What's the idea of that mask? You'll understand in a moment. Bring him in, Tonto. Uh, me bring him. An engine, huh? Do you recognize the man with him, Sheriff? Holy smoke, it's Stan Jardin. How don't I captured him in St. Elmo this evening? He's wanted for robbing the bank at Fowlerville. More important, he's wanted for murder in Chicago. Just who in thunder are you, mister? Does this mean anything to you? Here, get it. Bullet? Silver bullet? That's right. What? Why, you're the Lone Ranger. The masked man explained the facts to the sheriff, then said... I advise you to telegraph the Chicago police at once. And now Todd and I will be going. Are you leaving permanent? No, Sheriff. We'll be around here until we know the outcome of Jordan's case. Also, we're on the lookout for the two men who helped Jordan rob the bank at Fowlerville. Come along, Toto. Uh, Adios, Sheriff. Adios. Adios. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When boys line up to run a race, galloping Gordon sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked. Shaped like little round O's and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowl full, add fresh milk, and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Go power. You'll get it from Cheerios. Try it, and folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. The following day, far to the north of Pineville, two men read the newspaper account of the capture of their former friend, Stan Jardin. They were Gus Dunham and Tex Adams both of whom had helped Jardin rob the bank at Fowlerville. And Gus, we got to help Stan. Got to get him out of jail before they take him to Chicago. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. I've got some ideas, too. You have? When does the paper say the Chicago lawman is due to arrive in Pineville? Uh, two days from now. Hmm. Oh, Tex, the train don't go to Pineville. The nearest railroad stop is at St. Elmo. What about it? Well, that Chicago lawman will get off at St. Elmo. You'll have to hire a horse or rig to get to Pineville. That's right. Get saddled. I want to ride down that way and look things over. You said you had an ID. I'll tell you all about it while we saddle the horses. Come on. The Lone Ranger also kept abreast of the news that Chicago police were sending an officer west to get to Jardin. He explained it to Toto. I want you to go to town, Toto, and report back to me on everything that happened. Let me do that. When Detective Nick Clark arrived at the St. Elmo Railroad Station, he hired a saddle horse, got directions, and headed out on the trail toward Pineville. Being an inexperienced horseman, he had to concentrate on riding and hardly noticed two horsemen who approached. Gus and Tex were quick to identify the Easterner. Oh, boy. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Morning, mister. Howdy, stranger. Good morning, Tex. Is this the road to Pineville? Cover him, Tex. Don't make a move for your hip, Tim Star. Hey, what's the idea? Get down from that horse, Prano. Get his gun, Tex. Yeah, I've got it. I'll cover him, Gus. Oh, oh boy. Now, mister, start peeling off your duds while I do the same. We're going to change clothes. <laughs> yeah, and leave the cigars in the pocket. <laughs> yeah. 
It'll make me smell like a big town detective when I call on the sheriff and find them. Two hours later, Gus Dunham, dressed in the clothes of Detective Nick Clark and puffing one of the latter's cigars, walked into Sheriff Waterfield's office in Pineville and presented his credentials. Come this way. Here he is. You recognize him? Yeah. Yes, he's the dirty killer who shot my partner. Jordan, this is Detective Nick Clark from Chicago. Guess you remember him all right. Yeah, I know him. What about it? The sheriff tells me you'll fight extradition. I can't put up any fight. I have no money for a lawyer. And you'll go back with me? I can't help myself. You'll have to sign a waiver. All right, I'll sign it. Well, doggone my buttons. I never expected these. I'd rather risk a trial in Chicago than a lynch mob here. That's probably what'll happen. Sheriff, there's an eastbound train through St. Elmo in about four hours. I guess I might as well take the prisoner and get started. I'll ride along with you. Oh, that won't be necessary, Sheriff. I can handle him. He's still in my jurisdiction. I don't want anything to happen before he gets out of it. Yeah, I guess you're right. Oh, have a cigar, Sheriff. Yeah, don't mind if I do. Now we'll let him sign the waiver, just to make it legal. All right, Jordan, let's get going. Yeah. This may be a long mile, Jordan, but I reckon it's going to be your last one. happen in town, Toto? Plenty happened. Fast, Kimasabi. Detective come from Chicago. Him have murder warrant for Jarden. Now detective take Jarden to railroad at St. Elmo. You mean Jarden didn't fight extradition to Illinois? Well, sheriff say Jarden signed paper. Sheriff called paper waiver. Oh, I see. Jarden waived extradition. What that mean? He agreed to go back to Illinois without putting up a court fight. Oh, that good. On the face of it, Yes. But, Tonto, I can't understand it. What you mean? Jordan gave in too easily. No man is going to hang without putting up a fight to prevent it. Well, Jordan say him fear lynch, Mom. There's been no talk of lynching. Tonto, until he's on the eastbound train, I can't believe this is all on the level. Get mounted. Here, Silver. We've got to cross country to the trail they're riding. Them not gone far yet. We catch them all right. All right, let's go. Come on, Silver. Come on, Silver. Meanwhile, Nick Clark, the Chicago detective, and his guard, Tex Adams, waited a few rods from the trail leading to St. Elmo. <laughs> You're as funny looking in those clothes as Gus was in your outfit. Won't be so funny when the Lone Ranger tracks the three of you down. <laughs> the Lone Ranger? That's a joke. I thought so, too, once. It cost the life of the best friend I ever had. Hey, someone's riding this way. Must be Gus and Stan. Yeah. Yeah, here they come. Holy smoke. Who's with him? Another killer? <laughs> it's the sheriff in handcuffs. Oh, oh, oh. How'd you get the sheriff, Gus? <laughs> he just wanted to come along, didn't the sheriff? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this man? He's a famous Chicago detective, Mr. Nick Clark. I borrowed his clothes, Sheriff. <laughs> also the warrant I showed you. All right, Gus, get out of them dozen into your own. Take them off, Mr. Clark. We've got to clear out of here. Yeah, I'll be glad to get out of this outfit. It's kind of tight on me. This derby hat don't fit either. Slide out of the saddle, Sheriff. You've gone as far as you're going. All right, Blackfoot, get up there and stand by the Sheriff while you take off Gus's clothes. Now, give me my own clothes. Put them on. Where you're going, all you'll need is a pair of wings. You're not going to shoot him. <laughs> I'm not going to kiss him. And that goes for you, too, Sheriff. Why, it's cold-blooded murder. Not the first time I've committed murder. Get your hands hey, up. Hey, 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 who's the mash man? Shoot him down. No, you don't. Got that gun. Oh, oh, As the Lone Ranger rushed forward, his toe caught on a stone and he fell sprawling on the ground. In a flash, Stan, Tex, and Gus rushed him, determined to kill him before he could get to his feet. Get him. Kick him, Tex. Kick him. Get the engine. Oh, Gus, get him. Tonto entered the fray, trying to ward off the blows directed at his friend and give him a chance to get to his feet. It was an uneven battle with the outcome. Outlaws holding the advantage. As Nick Clark, the Chicago detective, watched the sudden turn of events, a light slowly began to dawn upon him. He realized that this was not just a battle between crooks, one of whom was masked. 
Oh, the masked man and the Indian, he realized, were on his side. Oh, wait he plunged minute, into the please. fight, swinging his ponderous hey, fist with right. telling effect. Give it to him, Indian! I'm with you! Get the detective! Get him! The suddenness of the detective's attack frustrated the outlaws for the moment, and they turned on him. Instantly, the lone ranger was on his feet, and his fist swung like sledgehammers, and the tide of battle evened. Three men against three. However, in a matter of seconds, Stanton Jardin and his henchmen realized they were no match for the masked man, the Indian, and the detective. A blow from the Lone Ranger dropped Jardin to his knees. He tried to get to his feet, but found himself helpless to do so. Only then did he yell. Yes, enough. Get your hands up. Hello. Find the keys and get the handcuffs off the sheriff. Ah, me do it. Mister, there's something I'd like to know. Oh, what is it, Sheriff? How come you and Toto showed up here when you did? Toto told me what happened in town. I was suspicious, and we followed you. We saw Stan and Gus make you prisoner. I see. You had it pretty well figured out by then. Yes. We left our horses and came here on foot. And you got here just in time. In another two minutes, the sheriff and I would have been dead. You better get mounted, Clark. You and your prisoner are going to catch the eastbound train. There's not much time. Uh, you're right about that. I'm not going with him. I demand a hearing in court. You can't extradite me without a hearing. Jordan? Jordan, you lost your day in court in this state when you signed a waiver. You bet you did, Jordan. Now you'll hang. Uh, can you take care of the other two prisoners, Sheriff? I sure can, mister. They'll be tried for bank robbery and they'll get the limit. Good. Then Tonto and I'll be on our way. Here, Silver. Good enough. Easy. Adios. Adios. Bye. Mon Silver. Get him up. Come. Sheriff, could it be possible that that masked man is the Lone Ranger? Yep. How did you guess it, Clark? Well, from what I've learned, there's just one man in all the West who could have done what he did. And that man is the Lone Ranger. Copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.